Hi, my name is John Slattery. I'm the owner and founder of Desert Tortoise Botanicals. And uh, I wanted to come on today to initiate our new YouTube channel with this short video about who we are, what we do, and uh, how this business got started. So, in short, Desert Tortoise Botanicals is an outpouring of my experience as an herbalist. Uh, working with the wild plants of the Sonoran Desert and the broader Southwest Bio region. So as I spent time uh, immersing myself in the landscape and learning about the plants, learning from the plants, I began to collect uh, a wide array of medicines from the local landscape and had not yet um, created an outlet for me to share these medicines with the wider community. So in 2005, after several years of engaging in this study, I applied for a position, a table, at the local farmer's market in Tucson. And at which point I purchased a business license and there began the business. So a uh, far cry from how a business is uh, normally formed with a business plan, uh, I formed this business out of a um, spiritual path, essentially, of uh, developing relationship with nature, uh, learning about plants, and uh, forging the path uh, for myself as a burgeoning herbalist. As a calling from within and from without, as, as the, the greater world, both the natural world and the um, the natural world and the people within this natural world that reflected back to me that this was my path. So um, fast forward about 16 years now and uh, we're a relatively thriving uh, on, mostly online business here in Tucson. I've since retired from the farmers markets and uh, we're still uh, bringing medicines forward from well crafted plants from the local environment and incorporating a lot more herbs that are organically grown from the global marketplace. So we're rooted still in the relationship to the landscape here and although personally I believe that all of the medicines that we that we need are available to us in our local landscape um, the the library, the encyclopedia of that knowledge is hidden within the landscape and because there's no longer a uh, thriving elaborate culture that can access that library readily, we're in an ongoing process of revitalizing that knowledge. Thus, we may tend to reach out to other bio regions or other landscapes um, to extract medicines that there is more currently known about it in the written library uh, of, of medicine as it is both ethnobotanical scientific literature and folk literature about herbs so that we can piece together a, a broader picture of um, our materia medica or the herbs that can help us. So my language as an herbalist is a bit outside of the common nomenclature and so that's what makes us quite a bit different from say run-of-the-mill herbal products company that's run as a business. Uh, we're cre we've created a business out of an herbalist's approach to working with plants from the local landscape, i.e. bioregional herbalism. Um, and so there's the, that rootedness in the local landscape but we've reached out and extended into the broader global marketplace to offer you herbal tinctures such as Don Shen or Salvia Miltiariza from, from China, Scutellaria baicalensis or Baikal skullcap, also from China, Eleuthero, also from China, perhaps India, uh, Ashwagandha, which is commonly known in the United States and some people do grow it. In fact, I've been encouraging more of our local organic farmers to grow such herbs as ashwagandha, which are suited to our region, but you, we may otherwise have to obtain ashwagandha from, from India in the global marketplace.
But that's just a, a little bit of a snapshot of our broader offerings. And but we will continue to return to our vocal. <coughs> But we will continue to return to our local landscape to draw on our local resources primarily and develop those resources and educate people about those resources in anticipation of inability to access herbs globally or other unforeseen circumstances and changes that may be on the horizon that make it more difficult for us to access herbs uh, globally. Ultimately, we would love to see a bioregional approach to herbs throughout the country in that the herbs that are utilized primarily within a bar region are grown or sourced within that region and utilized by those people locally. That is very likely the most efficient and from some perspectives perhaps the most effective way to use herbs, but we are perhaps growing towards that awareness. So Desert Tortoise Botanicals I see as, as a forerunner in this bioregional herb, herbal movement. Um, going back to the origins, um, in my process of developing a relationship with the landscape and the plants within the landscape, I naturally sought out people who still had an extant relationship, active living relationship with the wild plants. So I found that sparsely uh, on this side of the border in southern Arizona in the United States, uh, but upon venturing over into Mexico, into the state of Sonora primarily, I found it to be still relatively active, especially amongst the older generation. Now that was nearly 20 years ago and things have changed considerably as um, many in that older generation have uh, become quite aged or have since passed away. I have seen a couple of our elders, uh, I say our, in our uh, immediate community, um, pass away recently within the past couple of years. Just last year, Doña Olga, Luis Cañas, uh, a legendary herbalist, in Sonora uh, was a Mexican mother to me. Uh, she passed away just in uh, uh, this past summer in June and uh, had an a incredibly extensive career working with wild plants as medicine, an incredible encyclopedia of knowledge within her head, uh, which I have attempted to write down and hopefully at some point in time I'll be able to get uh, her life story into a book form and available for uh, the public and, and future generations to draw from. Doña Hortensia, uh, amongst the Seri uh, community in what is now Punta Chueca, she originally came from Isla Tiburón, the largest island in the Sea of Cortez belonging to Mexico. Her community, her people at large were forcibly removed from that island uh, several decades ago uh, where she grew up uh, speaking nothing but their native language and consuming entirely what they could forage and hunt for themselves from the desert, uh, local desert, mountain landscape, and the sea. So they were a wealth of information and a beautiful family to get to know, which I still remain in contact with. And over the years, they have provided herbs from the Sonoran Desert, which have gone into our products. Uh, the purpose of that was to rebuild these links across the border uh, and to um, open up doorways into their life ways by bringing people down to meet them. They were welcoming and inviting to us uh, and I would bring groups down uh, for educational purposes and then purchase herbs from them to bring back over the border. And that way I could financially help support their life way which was becoming more and more marginal and forcing them into more conventional industrialized ways of, of life. Uh, so that has had some moderate success over time, but because of the distance between us, I uh, haven't been able to maintain those relationships uh, as, as thoroughly and as, uh, as uh, consistently as I had in the past. But we still are in contact and I still buy herbs from them whenever possible. Such, such herbs as um, desert lavender, which uh, goes into our and sleep tea. Uh, such herbs as ocotillo flowers, which would also be in our Sonoran sleep tea or our Sonoran summer tea. Uh, we would also 
receive wild crafted herbs from them um, known as ohasen or senna. Senna, which we know in the in the herbal marketplace here in North America as a, as a laxative, but the Seri used it in a much wider array of applications, including cancer treatment as a um, as a remedy for a variety of ills for a pregnant woman, also as a postpartum tonic um, in diabetes, and as I mentioned, cancer formulas. Um, additionally, red mangrove was another herb that we would source from them, uh, which they also used for cancer therapy, uh, for infections, and for um, uh, blood cleansing, or to enhance and strengthen the blood. So. These are some of our relationships, ongoing relationships with indigenous herbalists uh, within our broader bioregion, which extends uh, significantly down into Mexico, and then arguably extends throughout the greater Southwest all the way over into central Texas, uh, up into Western Oklahoma, Southern Colorado, Southern Utah, Southern Nevada, Southern California. Um, and so Tucson arguably is at an epicenter uh, of this region. Um, radiating outward in, in all directions from here. So little did I know uh, when I arrived here about 20 years ago when I was essentially called to be here that I would be setting up um, a front-running uh, grassroots uh, herbal medicine company that was focused on revitalizing these ancient traditions, uh, revitalizing relationships between the landscape and the people and helping to support those people who are existing uh, very, very marginally so on, on the extreme edges of, of the cultural and socioeconomic margins of, of the society of this, of this region. And, uh, and then coming into a reawakening of sorts uh, of herbal medicine in this country, which I believe is very much so in place. And of course, you probably uh, have a sense of that because you're watching this video today and you're curious or interested in in learning more or supporting what we do. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of who we are, um, where we come from. Uh, we have our hands in everything that we do. Uh, like I said, we still are pulling in wild plants ourselves. I'm the primary wild crafter. I do at least 80 to 90% of the wild crafting annually for all the medicines that we use. Um, as I say, I've incorporated some on occasion still from um, these elder herbalists in Sonora. And then some of my students or closer associates that I trust uh, will harvest for me uh, here in Arizona uh, or elsewhere in, in the Southwest. So uh, looking forward from here, we will be offering um, some live sessions here on this YouTube channel uh, with an opportunity to learn more about our products or perhaps how we prepare our products. Uh, um, and in addition, uh, unique educational experiences that may involve um, uh, experiences within our um, production facility here in Tucson or out in the field getting to know the plants and the landscape a bit more that that are behind all of these remedies that you see uh, behind me. We have an array of specific tinctures and then custom formulas that I have essentially designed myself and uh, uh, most recently I have taken to uh, formulating uh, some of Stephen Herod Buner's formulas that he's derived out of his research into SARS-CoV-2 um, with some of my additions or changes uh, on occasion to these formulas. So all of that sort of material is going to be the backdrop of what we dive in more deeply into in the near future here on this channel. So uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, like the video uh, if, if you're interested in what we have to offer and please share this with your friends, uh, anyone you know who may be interested in learning more about um, vitalism, utilizing herbs in their local landscape um, to regenerate their health or looking for a reliable and trustworthy source for their herbal medicines that they can source easily and readily online and have delivered to their home within a few days. Uh, and we ship not only in North America but all over the world. We regularly ship packages to Europe, uh, occasionally to Australia, of course, Canada, and, uh, and elsewhere. So thanks for viewing today. And uh, once again, hit the like button, subscribe, please get a notification, and we'll be putting out new content very soon.